Hello, this is Amjad al-Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, showing another case of a series of cases of PCI in calcified vessels. This case ended up with perforation. The case is a 70-year-old female who is diabetic, hypertensive, non-smoker, had angina on exertion, her echo was normal, and TMT was non-diagnostic. This is the coronary angiogram. It shows a metacritical lesion in the LID. The rest of the vessels had no significant stenosis. Angiographically, the lesion have only mild calcification and looks to be not that difficult to deal with. And PCI was scheduled for another date. The IVAS shows distal vessel diameter around three millimeter and then this is the most tight part, and then a ring of calcium, and then the proximal part, proximal vessels have a large diameter. This is the tightest part of the vessel and measures around 1.9 millimeter square in area. So pre-dilatation was done using NC balloon 2.5 by 20 and then 2.75 by 15 to a high pressure. There was still waste at the mid part of the balloon. So here we face a situation of a balloon undilatable lesion. And we have a short video published on case of balloon undilatable lesion and what to do. In short, it's preferable not to stent, use large guide catheter with a support, use intravascular imaging, and then use special balloons like the cutting balloon, scoring balloon, and probably use some shockwave intravascular lithotripsy or atherectomy. In this case, we used shockwave IVL balloon 3 by 12 with all eight runs. I was showed some fracture of the calcium. Further dilatation was done by NC balloon 3. Then a stent was deployed 3 by 38, positioned in the lesion, and deployed apparently acceptable expansion, but post dilatation was done. Then stent boost showed a significant focal underexpansion of the stent. So post dilatation was done by 3.25 ballon up to 22 atmosphere. Then OPN and C ballon 3 by 15 used and inflated up to 35 atmosphere. And this is the IVAS, it shows a clearly underexpanded stent even after OPM balloon. The proximal part is well expanded. So what to do? We either accept the result with higher risk of both stent thrombosis and restenosis, or go to a higher pressure risking perforation. We decided to take the chance of higher pressure inflation. So inflation was done by OPN ballon. The OPN in deflator can reach up to 50 atmosphere. And at the burst pressure of 35 atmosphere, and when you reach up to 45, it has a uniform expansion. At the same time, we prepared a graft master stent in anticipation for significant perforation. We decided to use it right away if perforation was significant. So we use a new NC ballon, OPN NC ballon, 3 by 15, initially inflated up to 35. You have to increase uh, the pressure by 5 atmosphere and wait for 5 seconds. So then we inflate it to 40 and then 45. And this is what we got. The balloon ruptured and there is LS5, LS3 perforation. 
So we went as we decided right away for a stent graft and used it and didn't pass through the algorithm of how to manage perforation. Post dilatation done by NC Ballon 3.5 at the proximal part. The IVAS showed good stent expansion and this shows a stent graft. It shows how a stent graft looks on IVAS with significant reverberation. And this is a stent boost after stent graft with a better expansion. And this is the final angiographic result. So the messages from this case is that there are no simple cases and operators should be prepared for every possible scenario. And the second thing is that Korean calcium remains the last frontier where the battle is still going on. And thank you.